Can you tell us when you actually joined the army? June 1946. What what was it like then for, for someone who's joining the army at, at, at that age? Because how old were you then? 13 and a half. Okay, so how would your training have been different because you're going into the army to band different from anyone else going in as a regular infantry ma man or whatever? None at all. We had to do exactly what the other people would do. <clears throat> we had to train to uh, march, mm -hmm. all the usual uh, basics. Marching, firing rifles, revolvers, stain guns, brain guns, um, self-defense, 25 pound marches, uh, mile marches with packs on your back, all that kind of stuff we did for the first six weeks. Uh, and after the six weeks, what happened then? Then, that was, I was uh, uh, enrolled in Redford, the Army Base Camp at Redford, not even sure. And then after that, we had another three months at Catrick. We were transferred to Catrick Camp. I was put in the recce, the reconnaissance section uh, in, uh, in Catrick, the 67th Training Regiment. regiment which we had to learn how to drive um, Daimler Scout cars, Bedford 1500 weight lorries, and a slight, uh, a very basic um, introduction to driving the um, Valentine tank. And then, then when that was over, we got transferred then to the 10th Royal Hussars Military Band it's the men in lines in Chatham. That were the band was stationed. But at that point, there was only about 10 members in that band at that time. I mean, we didn't know this when we, when we joined. Because to make up a full band, you should have about 30 odd musicians. Well, so to get that amount of people, what they did, they amalgamated the Fourth Hussars band, who were in the same position as we were with very limited members because <clears throat> most of them have been in the uh, desert rats <clears throat> and some got killed in, 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 the, in the war in the, in the Middle East. So the bands were very short people. <clears throat> so, I mean, in actual um, fact, we didn't actually get into the band properly by what well, must have been the following year, 1947, that's about Easter, because during that, that time, the very bad winter of 1946-47 came up, and, and when you, you couldn't, uh, you, there was no coal, and there was an outbreak of meningitis in the camp. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't practice, because it was all, it's all, we, all we did for those about four months was shift snow. It was so deep mm. in, 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 the, in the hills up there, you know, country mm. up north. So it we didn't really start. Although we were given instruments when we first went in, but the, I mean, there was no training. Uh, there was how uh, out, out anybody could do anything. It was that fucking cold. I mean, the, the instruments used to freeze up. I mean, as soon as the, 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 the uh, trumpet started to play, the condensation went, just froze. You couldn't move the valves. You couldn't move your fingers a lot of the time. So where did you get your instruments from to start with then? The first ones you started using? The, the, the 10th Royal Hussars Band provided me with the clarinet. Yeah. But they had to, had to, I mean, they just said, go into the toilets and learn it. Well, I mean, I didn't even know how to hold it down. There. What, what's it? Go, go to the toilets and learn it? Yeah, that's what they did, yeah. Uh, it was a it was a man called he had a nickname called Zombie. He took me under his wing for a start and showed me how to hold it and what and what how to blow it and all that sort of thing. Who, hey, sorry, who was who was Zombie? It was a, 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 a one of the players, one of the clarinet players in the band. It wasn't until the all the other bands got together that um, I started to get to know because there's some really good players from the amalgamation of the three bands together. 
and I got I, I learned a lot from listening to other people. I mean, um, the bandmaster of the Fourth Hussar, Jaeger, he became the uh, the bandmaster of the great of the Irish Guards in the end. He, he, he got promoted. Mm. He was very well, a lovely trumpet player he was. When we was in um, uh, Catholic, we got sent to Lübeck in Germany. And it wasn't until we actually got there that we really started to get our finger as it were and get practicing proper. I thought, I thought well, I, I, I've given up the city job, but I didn't do it. I was I come out of the force with no no qualifications of or anything. So that's when I really got down to playing it. Playing. We're only in Lou back about, let's see, about nine months. Mm. About nine months in Lou back. The rest of the town was spent in eyes alone um, in the rural area. I mean, that was near Dortmund and Dusseldorf. Yeah. No. But so for the whole of this time, really, you were focused on B flat clarinet, were you? Yeah, all the time, yeah. And it wasn't until. Um, uh, I think it must have been about 1949, 50. A, a lad came into the band as a conscript called Paul Evitz. I've mentioned it before. He, he used to let me have his saxophone. And I used, that's how I learned. I used to play that like mad and be up in the, in the loft right out of the forest. You went this. into the forest to, play, to practice, did you? Oh, I have been yeah. <laughs> I've been playing in the, behind these bushes and on these Germans that came back and you know where the noise was going from. <laughs>